The Fulani paid an ultimate price of 640 death for challenging coronavirus. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening if you are watching. I'm Robinson Ambrose Afram Efuna. This is Miro African Diaspora TV, MAD. Welcome to Biafra Today. This is essentially a program where we discuss social and political issues as well as cultural issues affecting the life of Biafrans home and abroad. While Nigerians and the world at large are battling coronavirus outbreak and putting lockdown and social distancing as measures to curb the spreading of the deadly virus, they not revolted against the lockdown claiming it would prevent them from exhibiting their religious rights. Different media publications showed videos of both western and southern region of Nigeria being in compliance with the prescribed social distancing guidelines. However, the situation seems to be different in the north as some northern Muslims are constantly rebelling against the prescribed social distancing and lockdown. <laughs> this unfortunate rebellious attitude of the northern Muslim has left an indelible and regrettable death toll of 640 people being recorded in Kano in less than two weeks and still counting. This rebellious act of the North is also having a negative impact on the rest of the country, given that Nigeria is extending the closure of the state of Lagos, Abuja, and Ogun for another 14 days to combat the new coronavirus. It must be stressed at this point that the tendency of fragrant disobedience of laws and order by the northern Fulanese, while at the same time preserving for themselves special rights to the detriment of other ethnic groups, is an edge-long situation. It is a culture of impunity which started with Sir Amadou Bello when he introduced a Northernization policy in April 1960. We are not alive to their responsibilities because you can see from our Northernization policy that in 1952 when I came here there weren't 10 Northerners in our civil service here. Then I tried to have it Northernized and now all, all important posts are being held by Northerners. Is this policy of filling all key posts in the north so... The main aim of the northernization policy as expressed by Amadou Bello, the leader of the Northern People's Congress, was to ensure that the northerners gain control of everything in the country. And specifically to eradicate Biafrans from the civil service sectors of the northern states. Amadou Bello's northernization policy is therefore cardinal for the unbridgeable disparity between the northern Fulanese and the Biafrans, which remains inimical to the growth and development of Nigeria as an economically prosperous nation. His successors have followed in his path by implementing policies that tend to subdue Nigeria for Fulani overlordship. The absolute refusal of Muhammad Buhari to appoint in his government representatives of Southeasterners clearly depict a willful and hostile attitude deeply rooted in Belo's ideology of northernization and flagrant disobedience of laws and order by the North. Similarly, the ongoing subjugation perpetrated by Boko Haram, Fulani Hetman, and Mieti Allah on innocent regions and Biafrans received baptism of cruelty from Belo's analytic tendency. In addition, the secretive inclusion of Nigeria as a member of the Organization of Islamic Conference, OIC, by Ibrahim Babangida in 1986, as well as the forceful introduction of Sharia in 12 northern states in 1999 and 2001 during Olusegun Obasanjo's regime, are said to be direct affiliations of Amadou Bello's Northernization Syndrome. This attitude of disobedience to laws and order by the northern Fulanese is also coupled with strong sense of hatred directed towards the Biafrans which is being played out effectively during this lockdown. 
Several publications and videos show that people from the north were showered with money and foods as part of the palliative measure for the shutdown, which, as we have shown so far, they did not care to observe. In contrast to this, there are videos out there which show that Buhari's administration has tried to use food distribution as an awful ploy to impact the lives of Southerners negatively by giving expired bags of rice as palliative measure. While other videos reveal the Nigerian police aiding and abating this fragrant disobedience of laws and order by the northern Muslims praying in the mosque during this lockdown without the necessary preventive measure as prescribed by law for coronavirus. You, you, you see Muslims worshipping here in the community. They were guided by two soldiers. Policemen came from Moto Jame, they could not do anything. So I believe churches will still open in the community by Sunday. And uh, let's see what happens. Some of our publications and videos across the country, however, showed the stubborn graphics of Biafrans being subjected to torture, inhuman and disparaging treatment of the Nigerian military and their police counterparts. Apart from this, there are also news and videos about some Biafrans being killed by the Nigerian military apparatus for seemingly not observing the lockdown. When considering these adverse circumstances caused by the irresolvable north-south divide and the insatiable hatred of the Fulanis, especially against the Biafrans, the question any reasonable person should ask himself is, why do we have to remain one Nigeria even if it is not working out? Do we have to remain one Nigeria so that the North will not perish in hunger? And do we have to remain one Nigeria so that the Biafrans will continue to die in the hands of the Northerners? These are essentially humanitarian motivated questions which the mainstream medias are not asking, but Miro African diaspora do and we'll continue to ask. That's basically it for today. And thanks for watching Miro African Diaspora TV. Mad, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to be notified anytime we post a new video.